the vivid colors of the Paitani mark it out. Look at these saris and you will be spellbound by the color palette that seems to defy every rule in the book. Odd mixtures create the most spectacular and opulent weaves that have made the Paitani and the town it comes from so famous. The Paitani is also historic. One of the earliest known silks from India, it is said that Roman merchants would wait for days and weeks in the old port of Kalyan for the famous Paitani textiles to leave the weavers' looms. In Paitan, in the heart of India, many old roots met. Known as Pratishthana in the ancient times, the earliest reference to the city comes from the Buddhist Jataka tales, which go back as far as the 4th century BCE. This was an important post in the Dakshinapat or the road south. Merchants, travellers, monks and even Lord Ram in the epic Ramayana are said to have passed through this route. Python was always important. At a junction of roads connecting the east and the west, the north and the south, this would have been a bustling town located on the banks of the mighty Godavari at a time when the region around it was covered in thick forests. At his house in Aurangabad, about 51 kilometers from Python, historian Dr. R. S. Morvanchikar, who has authored several books and numerous research papers in Python, tells us about the city and the golden age it saw 2,300 years ago. What they did? This area, this entire region, Maratwada, as well as Ahmednagar, and part of this uh, um, Khandesh, they were distributed, parceled out by number of local feudals, like Ashmakas, Rushikas, Mulakas, etc. This Satvahana, they are the first to mobilize their strength and to unite all these tribal kingdoms, or better say Janapadas, into one empire, powerful empire, and that they started, the starting, the founder king was Satvahana. The Satvahanas are not given enough credit in Indian history, but for 300 years, between the 2nd century BCE and the 2nd century CE, the rulers of the Satvahana dynasty, who often used their mother's names, ruled a large part of India. Originally from the region of the present-day Andhra Pradesh, they made Python their capital and lorded over not just a powerful kingdom, but also a rich one. Trade was brisk and the Satvahanas savvy. Since they controlled a large part of the west coast, they benefited greatly from trade with the Greco-Roman world. The empire reached its highest under Gautami Putra Satkarni in the 2nd century CE. Interestingly, earliest records indicate how the Satvahana capital of Python was a center of silk textiles. Excavations in the region give us many insights. We excavated and we came across a reused house and after going to a certain depth, we came across a pot. Out of curiosity, we opened, cleaned the pot and we got around 300 ivory needles. And when it is inspected, searched, that during those days, these needles were used in the weaving of this silken sari. The needles are with the state government. You can go there, you can have, you can find. Python is full of Satavana pottery including terracotta figures. This Nag Ghat, or at least the site where it is built, is all that remains of the Satvahana era in Python. Dr. Morvanchika tells us that given that the site of Python has had continuous occupation for more than 2,300 years, there are layers and layers of history here. The best way to find it is in the literary records of foreign traders. It is from foreign authors, especially Greco-Roman world. And that Greco-Roman world, Pliny and Periplus, in that Strabo was one of them, Arian was there, Pliny was there. There were four persons 
and everybody was saying ptolemy among them was the first to mention that pathan was capital and pulumavi was the king and roman maidens rides they are brand mad after this silken cloth from pathan which later on get known or got known as pathan among their trade silk sarees from pathan known as bridal sarees that was an exclusive at the demand was so high that the buyers had to wait for months and years together ptolemy wrote that for that purpose their satwanas popular to um, port was kalyan so they have to wait months after months for obtaining that pathani silk sari from python so this was the documentary proof not by any indian but by a foreigner interestingly while most great indian textile centers were known for their cotton the earliest reference to the textiles of python indicated it was silk that was woven here traders from the satwahana empire used both the sea route and the silk route through land to sell their wares They had posts along the Silk Route near modern-day Tashkent and Samarkand, and also in the port towns of Kalyan and Baruch in their kingdom. The close Roman Satwahana trade relations can be gauged from the fact that a Satwahana-era ivory statuette of Lakshmi, dating to 79 CE, was discovered in the ruins of Pompeii, and is believed to have come from the area around Python. From the second century CE onwards, however, The political instability and decline of the Roman Empire meant that the active trade with Rome collapsed. As the Satwahana port on the west coast lost out, the seat of political power of the empire too interestingly shifted from Python south to Dhanyakakata, the present-day town of Amravati in Andhra Pradesh. It seems the weavers of Python also lost out. For at least 5 centuries after, little was heard of Python silks. It became a local operation until the 9th century CE when a new empire arose. This fort near Nandir in Kandhar stands on what was the site of the old Rashtrakuta capital. The rise of the Rashtrakuta empire from the 8th century onwards marked the beginning of a new era for Python as well. This was part of their kingdom stretching from the Ganga in the north to the Kaveri in the south. During the Rashtrakuta rule, temples and religious centers thrived across the Deccan. Interestingly, it was at this time that the old Satwahana capital of Python emerged as an important Hindu religious center due to its antiquity and past importance. Even today, you can see old temples and monastic establishments in the city. As temples were erected, pilgrims came and old looms too came alive, making the cloth that was used as offering to the gods. Python reached its pinnacle under the Yadava rulers of Deoghari in the 12th century CE. This also had a negative impact. The wealth and prosperity of the Yadava kingdom brought it under the radar of northern invaders. The armies of Alauddin Khilji destroyed the Yadava kingdom in 1317 CE. This fort of Daulatabad, the former Deoghari, is famous across India. It is a reminder of one of the most controversial political and administrative decisions in medieval India. The Delhi Sultan Muhammad bin Tughlaq shifted his capital from Delhi to Deoghari in 1328, which he renamed Daulatabad or the City of Wealth. The noted Moroccan traveler Ibn Battuta writes with disapproval in his memoirs about how the entire population of Delhi, including the blind and the lame, were ordered to march to Daulatabad. 1200 miles away with the court came the weavers from the north and while tughlaq abandoned his scheme due to the paucity of water and returned to delhi within 7 years it seems the weavers stayed on adding a new layer to python's ancient textile tradition new influences in the form of weave such as himru were introduced to get around the orthodox islamic injunction against wearing expensive fabrics during friday prayers Himru comprises of two identical fabrics, cotton on the inside and silk on the outside, woven together. 
also added for new design motifs. Dr. Anmita Agarwal from the IVP Mahila College, Aurangabad, who has studied the traditional embroideries of India, talks about how the paitani evolved during the medieval period. Muhammad Taluk, he uh, he shifted his capital from uh, Delhi uh, to Adaltabad uh, basically, and along with him, many of the weavers came here. But then afterwards, when he shifted back, the weavers were really influenced by Aurangabad, so they settled down here. And from there, they started with the Himru shawls. Basically, this was the these are the shawls which are like double-sided shawls. Uh, they have one cotton and satin thread mix, warp of satin and uh, weft of cotton threads. Okay. So when you see the, this uh, Himru shawls, they appear from one side, they appear uh, intricate design and other side on the float. This also gives a feeling of warmth. So this is basically because of the two layers of threads. So they are, uh, so now they are used as a shawls or uh, maybe a bed spreads. Now they are made in silk and cotton. Previously, they used to made with gold and silver threads or gold and silk threads where uh, the royal families used to use as bed spread or stole where the Peshwa especially the Peshwa ladies they used to pair up pair it up with their paithanis. Paithani weaving is like uh, it is also a sort of Persian art which is uh, uh, where they have taken the influence of Persian motifs and then this uh, Paithani uh, weaving is uh, done with very intricate design the nature around Aurangabad like uh, peacock motifs like which is like Mor Bangri, which is because uh, we can find uh, peacocks in nearby Aurangabad, nearby areas. Then some, uh, uh, it has Ajanta caves and Elora uh, uh, caves nearby. So just took a little influence from those caves. They took a uh, lotus on which the Buddha sits. And this uh, 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 lotus is also depicted in the uh, background uh, of uh, Pallu. Then uh, they have Tota Mena, basically the bird motifs or the floral uh, veil and these are being depicted in Paithanis. Uh, this, is, this was specially made for the royal families, especially it came into more existence in Peshwa uh, and Rain. The vivid Paithani sari reflects its ancient past and how different influences made it so rich. During the Islamic rule, right up to the 17th century, Paitani was better known as Jama e Diogari or the fabric from Diogari province of which Paitani formed a part. One of the oldest silks in India, the Paitani as we know it has evolved considerably. Interestingly, it got its name Paitani only in the 18th century during the rule of the Peshwas in Pune. During this period, Paitani was famous for its sahukars or money lenders who financed the military campaigns of the Peshwas. Many sahukars had their establishments both in Pune and Paitani. This close association of the Peshwai court and Paitani sahukars led to the introduction of Paitani saris at the Pune court. The ladies of the Peshwai court took great fancy to this rich sari woven with real gold and silver threads. Soon detailed specifications and designs for saris began to be sent from Pune to Paitani and saris were made to order. Obviously, as the demand grew, there was more and more pressure on the weavers in Python to produce more. That wasn't easy because these saris took so long to make. Just like the Roman sailors centuries before, the Maratha ladies also had to wait for months to receive their saris. Even today, a Pythony takes around two months to a year to make depending on the design and the complexity. As a result of this, soon new centres began to be developed to feed the need for these weaves. However, by the late 18th century, a succession of famines, floods and finally the fall of the Maratha Empire forced the Paitani weavers to migrate to other places such as Yola near Nashik. A whole new centre of lighter and cheaper Paitani saris evolved here and even today you can buy a Yola Paitani made here at a fraction of the cost of the real one. There are two types of Paitanis. One is the original Paitanis and one is the Yola Paitani. Now, many of the weavers, they uh, migrated from Aurangabad to Yola and they set up their looms there. The difference you can find in original Paitani and Yola Paitani is, first of all, the cost factor. And the second, 
uh, yola pathani has a chatai border okay so only the uh, uh, pallu part is done with hand intricate weaving and then uh, the entire uh, sari is done using a jacquard loom so it goes pretty faster whereas in pathani the original pathani the entire sari is being weaved with a uh, with hand because uh, it has motifs on border borders as well as on pallu so it takes around 2 to 3 months to we were pythani sari whereas yola pythani it takes hardly 7 days or 15 days it and now it is being made on machine looms also post the pythani craze in the 18th century the weave almost disappeared over the next 200 years with no market or patronage the original pythani sari was almost on the verge of extinction with just 4 to 5 looms left by the 1970s The credit for reviving the Pythani saris in Python goes to the Maharashtra Small Scale Industries Development Corporation and the government of Maharashtra which began a small center with a training program for Pythani weavers in 1978. Today the MSSIDC runs the Marathi Pythani Kendra at Python and this is a thriving institution which continues to preserve the authenticity of the craft. Alka Manjrekar who has been in charge here for the last 3 decades tells us about the journey. Initially we had only 5 weavers and that 3 weavers out of them were only from one family only means father forefather and son. And after that we realized that there are no weavers in the pattern who knows how to weave pattern. And it was realized by MSS IDC that there is a need of uh, giving training to the people who can weave this pattern because pattern is an ancient craft of this city this town i should say so that time onwards we started giving training to the people but to attract people we started giving stipend to them and we used to give raw material and how to weave the senior we most weaver he started teaching other people that this is the way how pattern has to be woven and on that way onwards we have now at least trained around 2000 people in the pattern they have started their own jobs they have started their own work and they are entrepreneurs individually unlike the past most of the pythani weavers today are women from non weaving communities the training here and the renewed demand for the pythani offers great opportunities for them employment and financial independence in fact so lucrative is the weaving of the pythani today that many of these women take their work home in the evening once the work is done in the kendra they go back to make shift looms in their houses my weavers are weaving all the designs which are all ancestral designs they are all particularly from the cave number 2 of ajanta they are the paintings painted on the uh, slab of the ajanta paintings and those paintings are weaved here today also we initially we used to have a norm for selection of weaver that used to be from weavers community but afterwards it was realized that weavers community is no more in this job so that time onwards we started giving training to the people who are in need and particularly women while the art of pythani sari is thriving and there is tremendous demand for the sari challenges remain most people do not know the difference between the real and the counterfeit pythani A real pythani is made with pure silver zari and is exactly symmetrical from both sides. While the cost of the real pythani begins at 25000 rupees and above, a counterfeit can be bought for as less as 5000 rupees. This makes the lure of a counterfeit really strong. We spoke to Kavita Dhavle, an award-winning pythani weaver who has been weaving sarees for the last 15 years. Once a novice, she is now a noted pythani weaver. and has trained more than 50 people and won several awards kavita reflects on the changing times pehle to aisa tha jab main start kiya ye shuru mein to shuru ke start mein maine 3 4 saal mein hai aisa dekha ki jo hum bunte hai jo color jo design hum bunte hai wahi log kharidte the kharidte the lekin aaj ye 4 5 saal mein aisa hai jo hum bunte hai aur hum jo color banate ho nahi unko chahiye unke unke pasand ke color chahiye aur wo jo kehte ho design chahiye to wo change humne kiya hai isme jo unki pasand ke color hai aur unko jo design chahiye wo design humne isme add kiya hai aur naye naye design bhi hai bahut sare to wo design hum bunte hai pehle hum bahut dark color banate the ab thode 
जैसे डिमांड आती है कि थोड़ा लाइट दो अभी डार्क मत दो थोड़ा लाइट दो लाइट में उसके बाद साड़ी का जैसे फैशन कम तो हुआ है ऐसा तो नहीं कहेंगे लेकिन लेडीज इतने बिजी हो गए उनके पास साड़ी के लिए वक्त नहीं है तो वो ड्रेस मटेरियल दुपट्टा कुछ कुछ लेस शेरवानी के लिए भी मैंने बहुत सारे ये बनाए हैं नई जनरेशन है वो तो आना चाहती है लेकिन ये जो काम है ना ये बहुत हार्ड है पंद्रह साल में हमारे पास कोई ऑप्शन नहीं था काम के लिए ये नई पीढ़ी आज पढ़ी लिखी ज़्यादा है हमसे ज़्यादा पढ़ी लिखी है तो कंपनी में जा सकती है और कोई दूसरा काम कर सकती है बिकॉज ऑफ द लेबोरियस इंट्रिकेट एंड टाइम कंज्यूमिंग प्रोसेस ऑफ वीविंग पाइटनी द मराठी पाइटनी केंद्र प्रोड्यूस अराउंड हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी साड़ीज इन अयर रेंजिंग फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज टू वन पॉइंट फाइव लैख रुपीज द सेंटर ऑल्सो रिसीव अ लॉट ऑफ ऑर्डर्स फॉर कस्टम मेड साड़ीज विच मे कॉस्ट अप टू थ्री लैख रुपीज एंड टेक अराउंड सिक्स टू सेवन मंथ्स टू वेब डिस्पाइट द हाई कॉस्ट दीज साड़ीज आर सोल्ड आउट इमीडिएटली ड्यू टू हैवी डिमांड and much like the roman traders and the peshwai ladies of the past sometimes buyers have to wait for months for delivery today the town of python is known only for its opulent sarees there is little memory of its 2300 year old history and glory or the fact that it was once a great capital while thousands of tourists go to aurangabad and visit the famous ajanta and elora caves or even dolathabad few make a stop at python The only reference to this once great place is the sari that is named after it. But then even the pitney, one of the oldest silks in India, doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Four decades after the great work on the revival of this weave began, only a sliver of loyalists in the region and connoisseurs know about the pitney. It gets lost in the world of the far more popular Banarasis and Kanjivarams. A pity given how much this historic weave has in common with its peers. After all, this was a textile that made India famous across the world. Mm-hmm.